Mm-hmm. What exactly is happening with uh, Elizabeth Warren and her proposal on a new tax on the wealthy? I know that uh, she is doing an exploratory, I guess, campaign to find out whether she should run for office yeah, or not. But I mean, is this something she's going to run? To do? I mean, that's what, what that means. Um, and this, I mean, this is definitely the kind of proposal that um, gets a lot of attention because now she's a candidate who's running for president, and this is a policy idea, policy proposal that can be part of her platform. And it's so perfectly in line with sort of her brand of progressive politician. She's an anti-wealth inequality, not just income income inequality, but wealth inequality. So this is, she's really the only person to, as The Intercept points out, take up uh, Thomas Piketty's uh, idea from his book Capital in the 21st Century, which is basically the book that informs us that, hey, guess what? In this current world, existing wealth can generate more wealth than any amount of labor or entrepreneurship can, mm-hmm. So, which is a problem. Uh, it, it's a problem for getting people to do things. Um, the only kind of wealth tax that we really have in the United States mm-hmm. is property tax. right? And that's essentially a regressive tax because it, it affects everyone who owns property whether or not you've paid off your mortgage or not, right. right, equally. And it's the only kind of thing that you can own that gets taxed on. Um, people will say that, you know, uh, we used to have um, an estate tax that's now got done away with in the, the Trump tax plan, but an estate tax could be considered a tax on wealth, but it doesn't actually take effect until after you die, so it really affects your children. Okay. So that's a little bit different. But this would be a tax on your assets. If you were to add up your total assets, property value, um, cars and things like that, your actual bank accounts, stocks and bonds, your sort of net worth, it would be a marginal tax. So marginal tax, don't forget what that means, above $50 million. So if your net assets, if your total assets are above $50 million, for every dollar above $50 million, Mm -hmm. it would be a, uh, is it a 2% tax? So it's like two cents on the first dollar above 50 million. Which sounds like okay. You only ta- it's, it's it's designed this way to only tax the uber rich, the ob- the unbelievably wealthy in this country. And we got a lot in this country, by the way. Right. And so, uh, according to two University of Berkeley economists, UC Berkeley economists, that would expect to generate two point seven five trillion over a ten year period, and only affects about seven seventy five thousand U.S. households. Right. Right. Seventy five thousand is a big number, but remember there are three hundred and fifty ish million people in the United States. So this is tiny portion of the 1% will get taxed and it will give a lot of revenue to the well, system. How, well, how are the top 1% people like Jeff Bezos going to buy their ivory back scratcher then? I, I keep on using that joke, but it's, from, it's a classic line from The Simpsons. And it just goes to show you just really uh, how greedy the top 1% are. Yeah, they got this ridiculous tax cut, but you know who has to hold that burden? We do. The working class people all across the country, Democratic voters, Republican voters, independents, we are all basically at the mercy of the top 1%. And it's ridiculous on how much power they have. And so I'm very interested in how this is going to get passed. Elizabeth Warren is, seems to be really pushing for this. Mm-hmm. Um, I do question her a little bit in regards to some of her previous decisions, especially during 2016. But, I mean, at least she's staying somewhat consistent. But it's very important to see how hard she's going to fight for this, especially in the Senate, on the United States Senate floor. Because um, – well, she hasn't written any legislation yet. Okay, it's really, so at this point, just a proposal. Okay, so she's offering this proposal. So when she writes the legislation, that's going to be key, and the wording in it, too. Right. And how hard is she going to fight for it? Because if she really wants to be taken seriously by progressives and independents and any other potential voters, how hard are you going to fight for this? If this is something you really care about, then you've got to really push forward for it. And I, I, I encourage her to do what is needed to get something like that passed. I really like this legislation, but here's mm-hmm. the, the thing that kind of – I'm cautiously in support of it It's um, for a couple of reasons. First of all, mm-hmm. Elizabeth Warren doesn't have the best track record of being a fighter unless it's politically advantageous. Like, look at when she came out against, uh, what, the Wells Fargo CEOs and whatever. It was basically after they were already convicted, right? right? I look at when um, she voiced uh, full-throated support for the water protectors at the Dakota Access Pipeline on the day that Obama required an environmental impact survey and was able to temporarily halt the construction of the pipeline. Right. She had six months prior to that to voice any kind of support. She knew it was going on, but, but didn't. But do you want to know who stood with the Dakota Access Pipeline uh, support? Jill Stein. Jill Stein, Ajamu Braca, and also Tulsi Gabbard. And Tulsi Gabbard, that's yeah. right. Um, well, just, just, just a little history lesson for everybody, just so just, we don't forget. 
this is the other thing about this particular policy proposal that I kind of scratch my head at is, yeah, I do want to impose more taxes on the uber wealthy. Um, and I know that income tax alone is not going to do that. I know we need to close loopholes and a wealth tax is an interesting concept. But ultimately, in the back of my head, I go, wait a minute. In America, we have a fiat currency. We basically operate on modern monetary theory. Modern monetary theory says that your net assets are equal to your net debts, which yeah. means that there's no actual need to, you know, fill your coffers with taxes. This could be something that people attack her for. Oh, you're going to raise taxes. And I go, wait, but you also don't need to raise taxes to implement the social programs that we really want and need. Yeah. So I'm conflicted on this because I like the idea. I'm not sure it's necessary, but I like the idea. I don't know. I, I'll have to keep thinking. About it. It's a you know, weird I, one for and, me. And, and, and I don't and, necessarily and, and things... trust Warren that right. she's genuine about how she'll fight for this because she, to me, has a track record of just making political hay when it's convenient. Yes. And we look, we also cannot forget another history lesson. She turned a blind eye to the election fraud that happened during the 2016 primaries between Senator Bernie Sanders and Secretary Hillary Clinton. And so I, I, want, I, I, I want to follow through with this story to see where it leads. And I hope, I really hope, at least if Elizabeth Warren wants to be taken seriously, she should fight for this tooth and nail. Take a page out of Alexandria Casa Cortez's book and, uh, you know, actually fight and don't be afraid and, you know, actually stand up against the neoliberal establishment system. People want strong political leaders. That's why people like Alexandria Casa Cortez. That's why people like Senator Bernie Sanders. That's why people like Tulsi Gabbard because they fight and they don't back down. So, you know, and I'm just naming just three elected officials because these are the most notable ones that the corporate media likes to attack. But there are other uh, strong progressives, too, that are making uh, and fighting for issues, too. I just want Elizabeth Warren to put as just as much effort that all of them are doing right now, too. I wanted to point out before yeah. we move on also, um, one of the things in her policy proposal I think is interesting is – she has some prescriptions for what to do with the money as well. Right. Um, she wants to put it into basically a universal dividend, which would operate very similar to the way that um, – what are the, the, the oil um, money that ends up going to uh, people who live in Alaska, the subsidy right. that the, yeah. the citizens of Alaska get due to yeah. um, oil companies operating there. It would be similar to that. It mm -hmm. would basically – she wants to be – it's very – it's a very socialistic – sort of policy it's a very sort of egalitarian help spread the wealth kind of idea and i like that i'm just skeptical of warren yeah and sometimes. captain jackson radical signaling it also uh, mentioned some things so captain jack said that the wealth tax ain't gonna do shit which is interesting i mean i i you probably have a point there, man. And I, you know, we, we got to see. So let's just find out. It's not going to recapture any offshore yeah, wealth. So, so, so right now, this is the proposal. Let's see what the writing is in the legislature. And, and if it turns out to be weak, well, then, Captain Jacks, you are absolutely correct then. And then another thing, too, is uh, Radical Syndicate said Warren was once a Republican and she didn't even endorse uh, Bernie, even as a Dem. So that's, that's interesting. I want to look into that. I, I never heard that before. I didn't. Yeah, that she had yeah. been a Republican before. I, I don't. I don't know about yeah, that. So, but that's a big criticism. Her lack of endorsement for Bernie. Yeah. And um, I've had people make this argument to me before. Like, why would you be? Why are people down on Elizabeth Warren for not endorsing Bernie when Bernie himself endorsed Hillary after you know he lost the primary? And it's like we're mad at Elizabeth for not em endorsing Bernie during the primary. Yeah. Right? It's not that we're mad that she endorsed Hillary after the primaries. We're mad she didn't endorse Bernie during the primary. Yeah. Exactly it. And so, mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it's there's, there's a lot of things to question. So hold all these candidates accountable. So, you know, that's, just, that's the one thing. Holding that thing up and kind of trying to scrutinize it and go, are yeah. we seeing this thing right? Do you yeah. see any blemishes in that? Oh, what do you see there? Yeah. That's what we're doing. Something. We, yep. we see something. So it's, it's just another thing we got to cover and talk about. She was a Prior to 1996, right. she was a Republican. All right, that was says. Daniel did, did off you camera. Did you look that up? I'm going to look up a little more. Okay, he's going to do right. a little more research for All us. All right, so to be continued, Radical Syndicate, uh, you were on point. So there we go.